Controlling your breath and being able to take in more oxygen as needed are two methods of increasing performance that are largely neglected in modern training. The term VO2 max refers to the maximum amount of oxygen that a person is able to breathe in and utilize during training. By increasing the size, efficiency and strength of the lungs, you can give this a huge boost. While elite athletes practice such things as running while holding their breath, it's a practice that is yet to venture into mainstream. That's a shame, as this form of training can benefit everyone in the gym, in the office and at rest. Being able to take in and use more oxygen is crucial for improving your cardiovascular performance, as well as your work capacity. But increasing your oxygen intake on each breath also has other, less obvious benefits too. For one, it helps you to increase oxygen supply to your brain. That results in a sharper intellect, greater focus and awareness, and even a better mood. What's more is that once you can control your breath, you can also take a degree of conscious control over the autonomic nervous system, as seen in the Wim Hof method. As you can see, there are huge benefits to training your breathing. Or to put it another way, there are huge benefits to training your lungs, like Aquaman. Listen to come aboard. What you will learn over the course of this video is that we are actually designed to thrive by spending more time submerged in cold water. This is a natural stimulus that many of us have lost, and we all have untapped potential that is unlocked by spending time underwater or simulating it with breath training. And the results of incorporating this training can be truly profound. So Aquaman is able to breathe underwater and remain there indefinitely. Unfortunately, we cannot achieve quite the same level of comfort underwater, However, there are many ways to learn to take in more air and control it for longer with each breath. One less obvious method for training your VO2 max is to train your lungs themselves, or more specifically to train the intercostal muscles and diaphragm to help expand and contract the lungs more powerfully. This can increase the amount of air you're able to breathe in with each attempt, thereby filling your blood with more oxygen. This results in enhanced performance, greater strength and a longer time to fatigue. One way to do this is with something called inspiratory muscle training, or IMT. This involves using an apparatus or other method to add resistance to your usual breathing. The result is that your lungs need to work harder to achieve the same level of oxygen saturation. Something similar can be achieved with altitude masks that you see people wearing in the gym. These products came under fire due to false advertising. They don't actually stimulate a high altitude environment, but what they do do, however, is to strengthen your lungs and improve oxygen delivery during intense exercise, so they're not useless. That said, you can achieve a similar effect much more cheaply by breathing through a straw in your mouth. With time, this will allow you to take in more oxygen on every single breath when training and at rest. You can easily purchase devices called breath trainers online that you can use in your spare time as well, and these will help you to conveniently engage in this kind of training anywhere. Want to take this a step further? Practicing breath holding might be an exercise that can offer benefits on par with the Wim Hof technique or meditation. It's something I think everyone should be doing in other words. In fact, breath holding was traditionally practiced by yogis, but has been gradually forgotten by many of them. Breath holding can further strengthen the intercostal muscles and diaphragm. It also helps to teach the body to become more efficient in its use of oxygen, increases carbon dioxide tolerance, that means that you don't have that urge to breathe as quickly, boosts mitochondrial density, that means you can produce more energy in your cells and raises EPO levels. In short, it teaches you to be able to perform with a lower oxygen content in your blood, making you more efficient at using it. This is why some athletes now practice running and engaging in other physical activities while holding their breath, which I'll talk about later. Something to keep in mind is that CO2 is actually a very useful substance that helps us to extract the oxygen from our blood cells. Practicing breath holding also teaches you to control your own response to physiological stress and to recognize the signs in your own body. That can help to improve your overall mind-body connection and give you zen-like control over your own emotional response. If you're going to reach impressive breath hold times, then you need to learn to relax your body and mind in the face of stress. Over time, these changes can drastically improve your athletic performance, lower your resting heart rate, and significantly reduce anxiety. And you'll start seeing noticeable benefits within one month. There are two primary ways to train breath holding. One is by gradually increasing the amount of time that you hold your breath in one go, which is known as O2 training. And this uses a fixed recovery period, usually of around two minutes, to expel all CO2. The aim is to improve the body's efficiency when working with low oxygen. And over time, you'll increase the challenge. The other is to train by reducing the amount of time between breath holds, known as CO2 training. Here, you'll keep the breath hold consistent at around one to two minutes. This should be about 50% of your static personal best but will gradually decrease the rest time 
from between 2 minutes to about 15 seconds. This results in a buildup of CO2 which teaches the body to improve CO2 tolerance and thereby overcoming that burning desire to breathe. That pesky thing. Typically you'll follow CO2 and O2 tables respectively, which provide you with a guided structure for gradually building up on each practice. But at the same time you should tailor this to your own current ability level and not push yourself too far. There are obviously inherent dangers here and you need to be really careful. You also need to think about your environment. The great thing is that this is also highly meditative and it's a fantastic way of building tremendous willpower and focus. The interesting thing is that the amount of time you can hold your breath on land is going to be shorter than the amount of time you can hold your breath underwater. So when you dive, you'll find you can dive even longer and even lower. This is thanks to something called the mammalian dive reflex, which kicks in in response to cold water on the face where we have special receptors. This reflex lowers the heart rate by 10 to 25%, increases blood flow to the vital organs, contracts the spleen to release more blood, and even alters internal pressure. It's quite amazing and it shows that we all have an untapped genetic heritage that would allow us to swim more like Aquaman. It shows that our bodies are designed to adapt to this stimulus. For our purposes though, dry training as it is known is safer and more practical for the most part, but we can occasionally tap into these innate Aquaman abilities as needed. Advanced level coaches are now introducing this kind of training for their sprinters, cyclists and more, but in the interests of said specific adaptations to imposed demands, they also train breath holding during their workouts. As reported in The Oxygen Advantage, which is a fantastic book by Patrick McCowan, runners are tasked with such challenges as holding their breath whilst running the last 30 metres of a 400 or 800 metre sprint. He also recommends athletes to hold their breath after exhalation rather than after inhalation, as with the methods just described. This significantly decreases the blood oxygen saturation and ups carbon dioxide concentration. This is ideal for stimulating the production of red blood cells, and it also reportedly improves the lactate threshold. McCowan recommends sprinters to practice jogging 80 to 100 paces whilst breath holding, with six repetitions and a minute rest in between. Want to go even further beyond? If improving your ability to hold breath has cognitive and athletic benefits, then surely we should be looking to the people who are able to hold their breaths longer than anyone else. And who would that be? Free divers. Free divers who regularly hold their breath for over 10 minutes. Magician David Blaine achieved a similarly impressive feat when he trained himself to hold his breath for 17 minutes and 4 seconds during a televised stunt. What strategies do they use to achieve these superhuman feats? One answer is something called oxygen packing. This involves breathing in to take in as much oxygen as you possibly can and then breathing in more on top of that. You take several additional gulps when your lungs are fully filled up. The logic here is that you are physically stretching your lungs and increasing lung capacity that way. Normally when we breathe in and we think we're at max capacity, we're actually still leaving a fair amount of space left for extra oxygen. When attempting your personal best, incorporate this method in order to see how it might facilitate greater results. Over time it might have long-term advantages. As mentioned, breath control is also extremely beneficial when it comes to controlling your autonomic nervous system. We see this most clearly with the Wim Hof method and Tummo meditation. This is all possible because the way we breathe is able to stimulate the vagus nerve. That nerve returns information about our physiological state to the brain in order to provide a two-way communication. In short, when we breathe quickly, it likely means we're either training or in danger. This information is relayed to the brain via the nerve, which leads to an increase in hormones like adrenaline and cortisol. That means greater strength and performance, but it also means you breathe even quicker and you place a strain on your body. You feel more anxious and panicked and your vision becomes more tunnelled. That's why it's so destructive to spend all day in a state of chronic stress, and it's why it's so unfortunate that most of us also exacerbate this problem by using shallow breathing due to poor posture and bad habits. By using belly breathing and a whole range of additional breathing techniques, you can undo this damage and start to better oxygenate your whole body. In the full article linked in the description down below over at the website, I go over a number of different breathing techniques that you can use to further train your ability to thrive on low oxygen and to stay in a state of calm throughout the day. That includes things like belly breathing, the fourfold breath, and minding the gait. I also talk a bit more about the Wim Hof method. Go and check that out if you'd like to learn more about that. So if you want to train for Aquaman-like breathing, it's more than possible. You can learn to hold your breath for potentially up to 20 minutes at a time, taking advantage of the body's natural adaptability and affinity for the water. Did you know that there's a tribe in the Andaman Sea called the Mokan? These people get a huge proportion of their food from the seabed, and as such they've actually adapted to be able to see clearly underwater. 
they have a unique ability to bend the lenses in their eyes in such a way as to counter the refraction of the water, while also narrowing their pupils to the limits of human performance. Unfortunately, it's thought that this is only possible for young children. Nevertheless, it demonstrates that the water, like so many elements in nature, has the ability to transform our physical performance in surprising ways. The elements trained us back in the day. Our lack of breath holding and water exposure is just another cause of our weakened domesticated state in modern times. By reintroducing breath holding and breath control, we could potentially tap into profound improvements in our physical and mental performance, running faster for longer, staying calmer and more focused, and enjoying greater health. And of course, exploring the ocean depths like Aquaman himself. So I hope you found this video useful and interesting guys. If you did, then please leave a like and share it around. That helps me out immensely. Subscribe to the channel if you want more like this. I have lots of cool stuff on the way. Of course, if you want a whole lot more, then check out the link in the description down below to pre-order my book, Super Functional Training. It's a ebook PDF, and it basically is the sum of everything I've done on the channel, all combined into a single tome alongside a program designed to train your body, but also your mind and your health and much more. You can find more information in that link and you'll also be able to save $10 off the usual price if you pre-order it now. The book releases on the 4th of November, at which point you'll be emailed your copy along with the additional supporting materials. So that's it for now. Thanks a ton for watching this and stay tuned for much more. Bye for now.